All right, today we got another versus matchup, and we're going to be taking a look at two of the most durable monsters that we have seen in the series so far, and that is, of course, Overgrown Rover and Elder Centipede. We're going to be taking a look at what would happen if these two were to fight, who is more durable, and just who is overall stronger, and who would win in the end. And this is pretty popular because, you know, they're two rather powerful monsters, more or less like Consensus High Dragons, at least in the community. And also, you know, they both have that crazy durability to them. So let's get into it. So first, let's try to figure out who is the most durable of the two, because I'm sure that's what you're most interested in in this matchup. Now, let me also say that there's like no real definitive way to like say for sure who is more durable of the two. But we could just try our best to use some of the evidence and contextual clues, as well as some deep cuts to really figure out what could be the answer to this. So thankfully, they do have common opponents in Saitama and Bang and & Bomb, and that will make things easier for us, but not exactly easy. So first of all, let's go to Saitama, and yes, they both were punched by Saitama, but those punches were very different, because Elder Centipede was obviously friggin' serious punch, and Overgrown Rover, uh, not so much. So first of all, Elder Centipede did not need to be serious punch to be taken out. This was done to mitigate any collateral damage that would have been done to the city by just Saitama punching him normally and possibly like sending him and like destroying his environment and whatnot. The serious punch ensured that he was gonna just be like eviscerated by it and he was just gonna be blown into the chunks, almost like vaporized, you know, the way that we saw him turn out to be. Now, Overgrown Rover, on the other hand, he was punched, obviously, super hard. Like, it caused that massive shockwave in the Monster Association. Everyone felt it. Like, even Genos, who was way back in the apartment. So, it wasn't like a weak punch by any means. But, it's heavily implied that this punch did not have killing intent behind it. Because, Saitama, in the sequence against Rover, kind of sees him as, like, a literal dog. And he's like, you need to be trained. So he's just kind of disciplining him with this punch, not really trying to kill him. Because we saw if Saitama does want to kill you, regardless of your power, he will do it. Such as the case with Orochi, because he quote unquote normal punched him and took him out pretty easily with that. So I'm sure that if he wanted to do that to Rover, he likely could have. Now, I don't think this is a strike against Rover, not even close, because first of all, he's durable enough to just take this punch. Like, maybe Saitama could have accidentally killed him, we don't really know. But on top of that, he gets up, not like, not too long after taking this punch, and then runs away, and then goes on to do what he's going to do, you know, what we're going to talk about in this video. So that's obviously very impressive. I don't think there's many characters in the series that could take the punch that Rover took, let alone, like, get up, like, I don't know, a couple minutes afterwards. And of course, that begs the question, could Elder Centipede take a quote-unquote normal punch from Saitama? And I just really don't know, because we don't see him take it. Now, we saw what the serious punch did, and obviously the implications of him needing to use that, since a normal punch would, in theory, send him flying and causing collateral damage. Maybe he could take it, maybe he couldn't. But this is all the real comparison that we have between the two punches. And I think they're both pretty impressive in their own right. But I would give the edge to Rover here. So now let's go into Bang and Bomb versus these two. And I'm really going to have to go beneath the surface. Meaning that we're going outside of manga territory. And we're going into what Murata has said on this live stream. So this is kind of official more or less. Because it's not just Murata saying this stuff. He does confirm it with one himself, and I'll go into that. But just remember that we're going to be looking at stuff that isn't on the page, so take that for what you will. So we know that when Bang and Bomb used the Roaring Aura Sky Ripping Fist on Elder Centipede, it cracked his carapace and made him molt and everything. And at the time, it was super impressive. Well, apparently, it's not that black and white. So according to Murata, after making a few adjustments to the manga, you know, to make things even out power-wise with, like, Metal Bat's feats against Elder Centipede, apparently now the case is that Elder Centipede was already going to molt regardless, and that Bang and Bomb kind of helped him in the molting process. 
So yeah, that's kind of weird because we didn't know that beforehand and we're kind of just finding out through Murata. And this is more or less kind of like something that you would read in a data book or something like that. So it makes sense to me. And these changes, like I said, that I'm talking about here, he does confirm them with one and one is actually happy with them. So this is pretty much canon official deep cut info, I guess you could say. So, I don't think this means that Bang and Bomb are weaker, I just think it means that Elder Centipede is simply stronger. Now, let's compare the Roaring Aura Sky Ripping Fist to the Cross Fang Dragon Slayer Fist, the technique that they used on Overgrown Rogue. So, the Cross Fang Dragon Slayer Fist is in fact stronger than the Roaring Aura Sky Ripping Fist, because Murata says that the combo attack cannot be twice as strong as the Dragon Slayer Fist, and it has to be one level weaker to distinguish it from it being used against Rover later on. And let me just also reiterate that this is approved by one, and he is happy with the changes. And that also means that the, the Sky Ripping Fist is a combination creation of both one and Murata. So that just dispels that right there. So the technique that they used against Rover is in fact stronger than the one used against Elder Centipede, but also at the same time, Elder Centipede is stronger than what we initially thought of him. But in the end, this is better for Overgrown Rover because like we've already established, he was punched by Saitama before taking that technique and was obviously stated to be weakened by it because he was like bleeding and everything. So taking the punch from Saitama, waking up, I don't know, however many minutes after it, then going on to fight Bang and Bomb, who of course were boosted by Fubuki's Esper ability. She enhanced their bodies uh, and then took the Cross Fang Dragon Slayer Fist. Got wrecked by it, but then got back up after that. I think these feats just trump Elder Centipede's feats of durability. I mean, you can come to your own conclusion based off of all of this information, but man, it's just, uh, I think it's pretty evident here that if we had to make a choice between the two, I would definitely say that Overgrown Rover is more durable of them. So now let's go into the other variables that they have, like uh, offense and speed and that stuff. So Overgrown Rover has some of the best offense that we've ever seen in the series. He can spam that crazy powerful fire plasma energy ball thing and it's super powerful obviously and we'll get into how powerful it is uh, but elder centipede on the other hand is kind of lacking in the offense department because it only really seems like he's capable of like thrusting at you or like trying to stab you with like his cheek blades that he has or like straight up eat you and he also has like the antennas coming out of his face and then of course he can just like kind of stab you with the many uh, appendages, feet, claw things that he has. But other than that, he doesn't have much. Like he doesn't have any special redeeming abilities the way that Rover does. Now, their speed, I think there's a big discrepancy in that as well. You know, Elder Centipede being as massive as he is, there's like going to be a restriction to his speed there. Overgrown Rover, on the other hand, is deceptively fast because, you know, he's pretty big himself and he gets around pretty good. I mean, he's able to keep up with Garo and Bang and Bomb. So I think he's trumping him there too. So all of that stuff right there, along with the durability, he's pretty much superior to Overgrown Rover in most of the departments. I mean, he's more durable. He has better offense, and he's faster. But Elder Centipede does have a massive size advantage on him, and he does have a regeneration ability, because when we saw Genos do the Mega Ultra Spiral Incineration Cannon inside of him, it blew him out, and then he apparently regenerated from it and, like, literally laughed it off. So that's also going into his impressiveness, but just another ability that Rover doesn't have, because obviously he didn't regenerate from the punch that Saitama gave him since he was, like, leaking blood all over the place. So ultimately, I think we're seeing, like, the superior monster here with Overgrown Rover. But now let's go into, like, what would happen if they were to actually fight. So I think it's pretty clear Rover would just spam the hell out of his fire energy blasts 
and Elder Centipede, and there's no way that he's going to be able to avoid these things. Other than burrowing into ground, that's like the only thing that he can really do to escape these, and Rover would obviously just follow after him. That's not something that he wouldn't be able to do. But regardless, he is a massive target for Rover's blasts, and it doesn't really seem like he has any kind of like limit to what he can do with these blasts. We've never seen him come to like an endurance problem with these things, and it doesn't seem like he has to like fire them off in like a short amount of time, or he has like a limit to how many he can do in a certain amount of time. He just fires these things off unlimited. It's really broken from what we've seen of him so far. So I'm sure he can just light up Elder Centipede indefinitely. Now, if these things were to hit him, what would happen? Well, it's hard to say exactly, but we have seen something like this before, like when Metal Knight attacked Elder Centipede. He shot his missiles at him, and, you know, Metal Knight himself says that they didn't leave a scratch on him, and that it's absurdly sturdy for a living creature. And then Elder Centipede says that he's an annoying fly afterward. But when the missiles are hitting him, Elder Centipede has like a, you know, like an anguish on his face. So it wasn't doing exactly nothing, but it is stating that it didn't leave a scratch. Now, what is stronger? Metal Knight's missiles or Overgrown Rover's blasts? Like I said, difficult to really say which one is better than the other, but we can kind of compare them based off of what we're seeing. We're gonna have to assume that he used the same missiles that he shot against the Meteor to shoot against Elder Centipede. We don't know for sure. I mean, he does say that it's a weapons test, so maybe he improved them, maybe he didn't. We don't get any real clarification on that. Just So for the sake of the video, we'll have to say that they're the same. So the area of effect, like the huge damage that they cause when they shoot the Meteor, is pretty big. But of course, they don't stop the Meteor. Now, if we compare the size of that to like the size of Rover's explosions, it's kind of similar, especially when Rover fires off like a big blast because he can, you know, change the size of them. The explosion is, you know, it's it looks similar, but that's basically it. I mean, we also know that they're strong enough to vaporize demon level monsters like Showerhead. Could Metal Knight's missiles do that? Maybe, maybe not. We don't really know. I mean, they couldn't really take care of Garo, but then, you know, Garo does have the shonen main character hacks on his side he has insane durability and endurance in his own right so he's not really a good variable to throw in here but i would say that they're right up there with the strength of metal knight's missiles if not stronger than them i actually assume that the consensus would probably say that rover's blasts are stronger than metal knight's missiles so if he just keeps bombarding elder centipede non-stop with his blasts I think it's probably going to get to the point of where he's going to exhaust Elder Centipede and probably br break through his carapace eventually, right? Maybe, maybe not. Just in my opinion, I think that would probably happen. And then he would eventually just defeat Elder Centipede via just non-stop blasting him.
I don't really see this fight going any other way. Is Elder Centipede going to be able to catch Overgrown Rover? He's just way too fast for him. And, he, and then the Blasts, it just doesn't really seem like this is the fight for Elder Centipede to win. So in my opinion, I think, yeah, Overgrown Rover probably wins this one. Uh, over time, just breaking through his carapace slowly with uh, non-stop barrage. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you thought about this one. Who do you think is going to win? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think I'm right? Let me know in the comments. But if you liked it, if it entertained you, please give it a like. I also have a Patreon to give you access to a weekly Q&A. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day.